correct. Are you sure? <laughs> Ready to go? Yes. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Anderson. I'm state representative for the 65th district, which represents northwestern Kane counties and southern McHenry counties. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you this morning. And with me is the bulk of the freshman Republican class uh, for the 99th General Assembly. On our election day, uh, or on our election rather, along with the election of Governor Bruce Rauner, we believe it represented a real referendum, a referendum that was about the reform of one party rule that's been in this state for many, many years, and the results of what has happened as a result of one party rule. The people's answer was very, very clear. The people wanted divided government. They wanted bipartisan government, not one party rule. So with that idea, we all came down here to Springfield. At inauguration, I was particularly encouraged, actually, by the speaker's comment. He said, with open arms, I remember seeing it, with open arms, he said, welcome back. Welcome back to the active role in government, bipartisan government. I thought that was a good beginning. In retrospect, it may have been the high point. That's not to say that there aren't good things happening here, below that leadership level. Incremental progress does occur here in Springfield. There are good bills, good negotiation that happens. It happens in committees where bills come through and they evolve, they change, and it's the subject of bipartisan discussion. And it's excellent. There are examples. Representative Wheeler uh, moved a bill regarding uh, 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 the, agents of the agencies of the state to review their processes to make sure that they're business friendly. We had good, strong debates about red light cameras, and uh, Rep Representative Worley uh, moved a bill re regarding double dipping of pensions. Those weren't in their original form for the most part. They were the subject of negotiation. And that's what happens when good government occurs. But when you get to leadership and power, it simply breaks down. We've had good bills that never get a chance to get out of a hearing. My own House Joint Resolution on the Constitutional Amendment number 28 never left rules, and mine was not alone. We have committee hearings where victims are paraded out, and quite frankly, they are re-victimized in that process. There's no balance to those discussions and no real dialogue. We have votes on amendments that come to the House floor that have not been subject to the process of negotiation I mo mentioned a few moments ago. And we vote on bills with billions, billions of dollars of spending with two hours notice without any consideration to the whole, the, the concept of what is the whole of the budget, or with regard to prioritization. And now we see a, a, a vote on a constitutional uh, amendment for a millionaire's tax coming. The people put constitutional amendments, or tried to put constitutional amendments on the ballot when we were all elected. Those, of course, never saw the light of day. With the existing powers that be, that's not going to change. The only way really to change that is to, to work on real reform. I don't believe there's a single one of us here who truly understood the high barriers towards that reform that have been erected by the entrenched leadership here in Springfield. The time is now to discuss this issue while we are in, amidst this gridlock. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Representative Wheeler. Or, Winger, pardon me. Thank you, Representative. Christine Winger, Representative District 45. When I came to Springfield five months ago, I arrived ready to roll up my sleeves and to get to work solving the state's problems. What I found was a culture where cooperation and bipartisanship were not welcome. The people of Illinois encouraged us to find creative solutions and to work in a bipartisan manner our attempts to do so have been blocked by the Democratic leadership. Yet on Inauguration Day, the speaker welcomed us to the table in conversation. What a disappointment we're at. Status quo is rampant in the state of Illinois. For far too long, Illinois has suffered at the hands of entrenched politicians stifling new ideas and solutions. Budgets haven't been balanced, reforms haven't been implemented, 
and debt has continued to grow. Our credit rating is in the tank and the Democrat leadership doesn't seem to care. Politics have gotten in the way of good governance and progress. It's time for a change. Our status quo is not working. That's why I am joining many of my fellow Republican colleagues today to call for a constitutional amendment for term limits in the General Assembly. Let the voters decide whether term limits are a good idea for Illinois. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Batnick, 97th District. It encompasses Oswego, Montgomery, Plainfield, and Sherwood. Um, I've never held elected office before four months ago, but I have always been a supporter of term limits. After spending four months in this building, I've come to realize it's an absolute necessity. Just a few members are able to stifle the process for everyone. They put politics over policy. Too much, too much time is spent on gamesmanship down here. We all need to work together on solutions that put Illinois back onto a path towards prosperity, and that path must include reforms to how we do business down here. One of those key reforms must be the implementation of term limits for members of the General Assembly. Thank you. And with that, we'll take questions. You talk about leadership, uh, particularly Democratic leadership holding everything back, but didn't your guys' governor say that he's not willing to talk about revenue until his reforms get passed? I think, I think the, the, the real question is, is there negotiation happening? Sometimes you don't talk about all pieces of the puzzle all at once. Perhaps you have to talk first about where are we now? What does today represent? So we talk about what is our existing situation, what needs to be cut. A lot of times those are the hard discussions. If you go right to revenue, then you've eliminated the need or the pressure to really discuss the idea of real substantive cuts and real prioritization. So no, I don't think the governor is opposed to d discussing anything as long as we do it in the right order. But understand, I don't speak for the governor. Do you have a specific number of years you're seeking in term limits to be? My, uh, my bill, which is uh, HJRC 28, uh, proposed 12 and 16. So 12 in any given house, 16 total. So if, if you wanted to split it between the Senate and the House and your electorate wished you to do that, you could. Uh, and then it also proposed a limit on uh, constitutional offices of two terms. And would the 12 or 16, would that have to be consecutive? Could you take a break and come back for another? Or would that be for life? That would be for life in my proposal. And has anybody up here, has anybody unilaterally said, I will term limit myself, and if so, to how many years? I, I don't want to speak for the, the group. Okay. I, I mean, my own, my own personal point of view on that is I'm pretty much limited to 12 years. Pretty much? Pretty much. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not, well, the, you never know what the future could hold, but, but my view of it is, is that that's an appropriate point where I think I have learned enough at that point to be effective, hopefully, through those years. But you stay that long and you start to lose effectiveness because you may become part of the problem. So I have never committed to an absolute uh, number because I don't believe in doing that unless we can get it entrenched so that everybody believes in it. But yeah, generally 12 years. Given that minute you campaigned on coming down to fight the entrenched interests, did you really believe Speaker Madigan when he said, welcome to the table? I hope so. Uh, oh, I've been accused of being naive many times. I, I have no problem with that. I believe ultimately that, that most people down here are here for the right reasons. And in fact, when I work with people on the other side of the aisle on the smaller issues, like I said, you know, the lower level stuff, I see bipartisan support all the time. So I have great faith in people that we can make change. Uh, but I have been a little disappointed, like I said, uh, in the top level leadership. But I remain optimistic that we as a people can make a difference. Does that top level leadership include Republican leaders or just Democratic leaders? That's a fair question. I would say that it, my frustration stems from those who are in power, which is the Democratic leadership, because of the things we can't do. We can't have fair, fair hearings on our bills. Uh, that isn't controlled by the Republicans. If the Democrats are making their own budget, is some of the leverage to get something like this done or other things in the turnaround agenda, is that weakened? Is your ability to get some of that stuff bargained for it uh, weakened? I'm not sure how to exactly answer your question because I'm not sure how much power we actually have in that dialogue. Certainly the fact that we aren't included in that process is a problem. 
um, I, I think that all of us need to be at the table, and quite frankly, we're not. And the argument against term limits over time is that if you term limit members, then it's staff who stay here forever and lobbyists, many of them ex-members, gain more control over the process. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, that's certainly the balance, right, is that, is that if you have everybody here just for a fairly short period of time, they don't have enough time to get up to speed to understand how this place works. And I think that that's fair. That's why for my bill, it was 12 and 16 years. I also filed other bills that related to that with regard to the revolving door policy on lobbyists so that perhaps we wouldn't have that, uh, that issue presented quite as immediately. Those also never got out of rules. And basically, and maybe somebody else asked this in a different way, but your, many of the leadership on your side, I'm sure, has been here longer than you think people should be here. Have they lost their effectiveness? And are they bad legislators because of that? I'll let them speak to that. I won't answer that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Photoshop. <laughs> Woo hey, she used to be on radio. What's the difference? Websites, <laughs> Bernie Websites. <laughs> I'm sorry. 